Hey everyone, welcome to Ellis Mowers. I appreciate y'all watching. This video is going to be a little different than my mower videos and probably will bring a lot of first time viewers because, just because it's about vehicles. I occasionally do a, vehicle, or a video about my cars and stuff like that with associated repairs because I know those help just as well as lawnmower videos. So if you are a first time person coming over to the channel, thanks for watching. If you like lawnmower stuff, that's mostly what my channel is about. I have two cars here. Uh, if you follow me, you know, well, both of them are mine now, but one of them I've had a little while and one I'm just uh, bringing in. Um, and they kind of equate to two cars that are about, two really good cars you can get for about $3,000, maybe three to $4,000. Um, I just wanted to share them with you all. So uh, I'll tell you the reason for the whole car switching around here at the end of the video for those who are interested and those who are loyal to the channel but right now we'll go ahead and uh, get started just by looking at these two cars that I'm talking about here alright guys so we're gonna get started here the reason why I, I kinda wanted to discuss is because I'm very familiar with both of the vehicles one of them because it's been owned by a family member and one of them I've owned for the last three years. And both of these cars have been essentially trouble free from the time that it was bought new, the time that I bought this three years ago. That's why I wanted to share these with y'all. Um, not just talking, I didn't just buy a car and start talking about it. So I wanted to show y'all at least I have huh, somewhat of a little bit of credibility here. I've got my Honda Fit listed for $3,400 just to give you an idea. It's 2021 September of 2021. Um, most of the ones I see on Marketplace are in the four dollars to $5,000 range. We'll start with the Honda Fit here. The reason why I've got mine listed for a little bit less is because I had some deer, a deer incident here. You can kind of see this is a little, they're not hard to fix. It was very easy to fix, but the thing is, you can see this headlight's white, this headlight's gray. The thing about these cars is that if you have a wreck in one of them, they're hard to find headlights, matching headlights for them, unless you buy, I guess, some off of eBay, but they're like $200 plus. But they match, the inside of the headlight matches the body color of the car. So this came off of a gray car, and this is the best headlight I could even find in the state whenever I had a deer incident. I had to get this car back on the road. But, hit a deer about 55 miles an hour, and pretty much wrinkled the fender, the door, and that door. And, uh, no airbags, no nothing. So, I just kind of fixed and painted a couple of things white and kept moving on. Anyways, let me give you some specs about this car. I do have you do have keyless entry and stuff on this car, so it's kind of cool. Um, this car has about two hundred and twelve thousand miles. I bought it at one hundred and fifty-one. Drove it a little over three years, um, and starts good, runs good. The only thing I've noticed. Let me get y'all off of the tripod in here. You have power windows. This is the Fit Sport, 2007 Honda Fit Sport. Power windows, power locks. Uh, you have tilt. This is the automatic. Uh, you can get, you, there's a lot of these out there in manual, or that are manual transmissions, five speeds. Um, auto is very slow, however, it, uh, this car is pretty much bulletproof. Um, 212,000 miles. You have fog lights. We actually have paddle shifters, believe it or not. Right here, you can kind of see, pardon the sun glare, it's getting kind of late in the afternoon. Power Paddle shifters. You got your regular AM, FM, or not cassette, CD. You have your aux input down here, also with 12 volt uh, cigarette socket type deal. I used to have a dash cam plugged into it. Um, and you have a sport mode where you can select your gear with the paddle shifters and all that mess. But you crank it up, and we've been sitting here about a week now. 
Car's got 212,000 miles on it. You might hear the starter hang a little bit, and that's kind of common with these cars. Not in that instance. But you can see, starts, runs, great, no warning lights. This car's never had a warning light the entire time I've owned it. Um, you have AC. Um, all the, these are all cable operated, so you're not talking about any vacuum lines. Got your AC, click that on. And then your uh, CD player. The only thing I've noticed is that the display kind of goes in and out a little bit. You have a couple of dead panels or panels that are kind of dying here. So that's the only thing I could see. And the buttons kind of get a little sticky, especially number five. It won't really let me change the channel very easily. So very minor. You can you can easily d uh, fix that. Um, but the thing is about these cars, you got power, power mirrors. These cars will sh have a lot of room in them in the back. That's the huge plus about these cars. Also, you get Honda reliability. Like I said, I have not done a lot to this car since I bought it. If I had not hit the deer, the only thing that I would have done to this car, honestly, is a windshield. And that was because of a rock chip and a crack. It had the original windshield when I bought it. Front brake pads and rotors, tires. It had a, a CV axle done under a recall, which is kind of nice. It got a brand new CV axle on it. Let me show you under the hood. Well, we'll look in the back and then we'll go under the hood. And a couple of other small things. I mean, nothing crazy. Maintenance items, oil changes. Put a serpentine belt on it, battery. Other than that, I've driven the daylights out of this car and it's done great. There's your back seat and you can see, I'll, I'll sit in it. I've got the back, the um, seat in my position, which is almost as far back as it'll go. You pop in here and I'm five foot seven and you can see the amount of room I have to stretch out. And you can lean the seats back as well. And just sit back here. I have plenty of headroom. If you can see the headroom. Plenty of headroom. Same thing for the driver. I bought this car with a good deal. Or on a good deal. When I got it. Um, and. Did a really good job. Buying it. Um. But, you know, the compromises are it's a smaller car, it's rather slow, but you get 35 miles a gallon, which is really cool. You can have magic seats, they'll flip up like this. You can also fold them down and it'll provide you, I'm not going to do it all on camera here, but it'll provide you a flat floor in the back. And we'll show you the back here. I know a lot of features like this are very important to buyers that's kind of why i wanted to do this again you can get a good one of these for anywhere between three and four thousand well, three and five thousand dollars if you're looking hard or looking easy enough and i see them with i've seen them with over three hundred thousand miles on them so here's the back area decent amount of room i can fit a 32 by 54 inch window face down in the back of this when i have those back seats down i have also done mower work and done two push mowers a toolbox weed eater something else i mean i've, I've thrown a bunch of stuff in the back of this thing um so that's kind of looking around it let me pop the hood again your passenger seat this guys this car is small and unless you pull up next to like a ram 1500 or whatever truck equivalent you don't really feel like you're driving a small car because when you get inside it you don't really feel like you're cramped especially if it's just one or two people driving it so let me get under the hood i'll show you under the hood real quick
super simple, super easy to work on and to fix, if you even ever have to fix anything on this. Your battery's right here. I put a Group 51R in it, which will fit right here. Uh, but I think it, they take a 151R, but the 51Rs are much cheaper batteries. There's your brake fluid reservoir, coolant. Um, recommend just using Honda fluids if you do have one of these. Oil dipsticks right here. Your oil filter is right in the front, right there. I mean, you, it's so easy to get to. Um, again, wash your fluid and all that good stuff. Your serpentine stuff right here. Your alternator. AC compressors on the bottom and stuff like that. Um, it's a little 1.5 VTEC. Not a lot of power, like I said. 109 horsepower with the automatic transmission. You will win zero races if you're even racing anybody. But ease of fixing and whatnot, it's great. Your air filter just pops off with four clips right here. Your cabin air filter is just under the um, glove box. Very easy to get to runs good i think these are solid lifters so you might have to do a valve adjustment on them periodically um, i never had to do one on this in my time of ownership um, only thing is with the sport package you are a little bit low to the ground so you have to be careful and mindful of uh, curves and big dips if you're going in and out of parking lots and stuff like that so you got to be mindful of that um, the bumper had already been pretty compromised when I originally got it and really the only thing holding it on is some zip ties and four um, clips but I've driven it over 60,000 miles like that and I've never had it try to come off on me so um, and also the previous owners somehow got the uh, got the wheel skirts missing so you know you got a couple cosmetic flaws but in terms of mechanicals this car lived in D.C. most of its life as well before I got it, according to the records that I got. Richmond, Virginia, Washington, D.C. area. So you know it didn't live the easiest life before it came to me, but um, it still lived a, I guess it still lived a pretty decent life, uh, so to speak. I don't know much about the history of the car, but um, I do know that in the 60,000 miles that I've owned it, it has been excellent. And... Uh, if you're like I said, if you're looking for something small but it gets good gas mileage, if you don't mind it being a little loud and buzzy because it is, it's what you get with an economy car like this. Um, but if you want to have a little bit of fun, throw it in some corners, it'll stick some corners. Um, and pretty much you can drive this thing till the wheels fall off, and it's probably not gonna have any issues. I know that coils are an issue, but the coils are right, literally right here under this cover. I mean, it's super easy. Um, yeah, I think that's about all. Um, like I said, at the end of the video, I'll tell you about the reason why I'm getting rid of it in lieu of this Camry over here. But, if, uh, if that deal didn't literally fall into my lap, I would not be getting rid of this. It was such an excellent car. It's just a little slow, but I can deal with that. For all the pluses that you get out of it, I definitely would recommend buying one of these. And they're cheaper than a CRV of the same era by about half, and you get a decent amount of utility compared to it. I have a Honda Element too, and uh, that will never, I will never sell that. But anyways, that's my experience with the Fit. That's why I say, that's why I would recommend this. Um, as a nice cheap car to get. Let's move on to the Camry. I hope I have not bored y'all and we'll keep on cruising. Alright guys, so here's the Camry. Like I said, I got this from a family member. Um, we worked out a deal uh, for me to get this car. It's uh, pretty much the story that I want to share on this. Um, this was purchased brand new um, at the Toyota dealership by them. Had a little over 100 miles on the clock. It is a 2002 model, so the first year of this body style. And the first year of a lot of changes for the Camry from the previous years, 01 and prior. A lot of good changes, in my opinion. The reason why I recommend this over uh, the older ones 
Um, and the reason why I recommend both of these, a big one is because they're both driven by a timing chain, so no um, timing belts that you have to change after 100,000 miles or so, whatever the service intervals are. Again, if you're looking for like a five door hatch, if you're looking for a sedan, these are probably one of my top choices, if not top choice, for many reasons, including the timing chain. We'll get into the Camry now. Um, I just got this, so like I said, I'm selling this, keeping this, because um, I know the entire history of it. I've driven this car multiple times before. I have owned it, gosh, upwards of 10 years ago. Um, always have loved this car, and when the opportunity came for me to purchase it, I could not turn it down. So, this is the... This car was just under $21,000 new. I got the window sticker. And, uh... This is the LE trim. And it has one option. Keyless entry and power driver's seat. This came in a package. That's literally the only options it has. So, oh, that keyless entry does not work. I've got the other one in the pocket, I think. Maybe I don't. But I do have one keyless entry remote that does work on this. Um, and I have both keys plus the valet key. So we'll pop inside. Put This car's been sitting. Hasn't really been driven much over the past few years. But this car pretty much has brand new Goodyear tires on it. That were put on, I believe, last year. Oh, they weren't. Let's see, the date code is 2017, so they have been, they've got less than 5,000 miles on them, either way. Um, if you pop inside, you can see that, well, the mileage has not shown up yet, but the car has about 217,000 miles. You would never know it by looking in the side of this thing. It is in excellent condition. Body-wise, it's also in really good condition. It just needs a really good wash and wax and buff. And it'll bring the shine back. The car originally was hit in the rear um, in a parking lot while it was parked. While this car was parked. And so a lot of the rear has been replaced. Um, I believe both taillights, bumper, trunk lid, a lot of the quarter panel stuff have been replaced on this car. Um, but again, the front, everything's all original. Um, I have very minimal, if any, cosmetic damage at all. Of course, white helps it a lot. But um, got a couple of paint flaws here and there. Of course, it's unfortunately gonna be sitting under um, some trees here at my house. So it'll be a little bit more of a chore to keep it clean, but I can still do that. Um, he put vent shades on it, but this thing, and if you look, this is 217,000 miles in a driver's seat. The padding is a little bit, and y'all saw the fit too, I mean, the the seats are still in excellent shape, all things considered with the number of miles, especially since this has been eh, probably 70% highway miles, I would suppose. Um, maybe a little bit less because it did get driven about an hour and a half trip here and there for a while. Um, but it was much younger. But this has got the, um, like I said, the only two options this car's got is keyless injury and power driver's seat. So the next option was to get a JBL stereo system according to the options packages that I was looking up. And, uh, so... Like I said, not much, but again, not much to go wrong, much like the Honda. You don't have a lot of these newer modules and turbocharged engines like on these newer cars. But um, again, you've got your three rotary deal here for the climate control. It works. Nothing crazy. Start it up. And I've got a temperature gauge and whatnot and time. We have 217,000 miles on it. Crank it up. No warning lights. He did say that the check engine light sometimes comes on for a catalyst deal. So I don't know if the catalytic converter is slowly losing its efficiency. 
but I live in a county that does not require emissions inspection, so that's not really a big deal for this, and nor for me, plus the deal that I got it for. Can't really complain. It was garage kept most of its life, so I don't have really any dash issues like you see along a lot of them where this, this is just barely starting to peel up here, but nothing crazy. Um, even the armrest isn't worn out. You got plenty more room in here. Like I said, the AC works. I got a 12 volt power port down here as well as up here. You don't have an aux input. But you do have a tape deck and a CD player. Intermittent wipers, which is great because my fit didn't fit, only had one interval. Daytime running lights as well on this. No fog lights though. But you can see both of the interiors have held up decently well in the amount of time that they have been living. Um, turn the AC on, you can hear that click on. You can't feel it getting cold, but you can... This air is colder than the one on that, that fit over there, and that's great. This car's got cruise on it as well. That was standard equipment. Um, cars, if you're looking for something comfortable to drive, uh, and a lot less dramatic, I'll say that much. A lot less dramatic and comfortable. You go for this over the fit. However, if you're looking for something small that gets good miles per gallon and can pack a bunch of stuff in it, it's hard to beat the fit there. Um, again, you've got power windows, locks, the whole deal here. Same, pretty much same equipment as you do on the fit. Um, back seat room's pretty good. I have it in my driving position. We'll get back there real quick. Again, you're talking about cheap to replace the tires because they're a common size. They're a 15-inch wheel on these. Um, we'll pop in here. I'll show you the leg room. Maybe, actually, maybe a little bit less than in the fit, but we'll see. It's a little bit more. Um... You don't have the reclining seats, but you still got plenty of room between me where I've got it in my driving position. Uh, like I said, you got plenty of room. Back seat amenities include you got a rear shoulder belt, you've got the cup holders that fold down right here. So you're doing pretty good back here in the back. Um, power windows and all that stuff you don't have rear ventilation or anything like that that was kind of before that started happening on cars um, let's check uh, trunk space and again keyless entry has the ability to pop the trunk you have a pretty large trunk here all things considered uh, my wife's got a Jetta and it's a little bit smaller than this but this has some serious trunk space with it. You got an area to put like tools and whatnot if you decide to do that. And this one has a pass through as well that you can get to the main cabin from the trunk, unlike the Avalons where that's built into the structure of the car, um, where you just have a ski pass through. But here you have a bigger pass through, which is good. Again, look at the back of this. I mean, almost looks like new doesn't it it's awesome and uh we'll go under the hood next because we're just about finished with that again like i said the tires are in good shape like new your tire costs are going to be low on both of these vehicles as well as any maintenance costs are gonna be pretty low because they're pretty common they're pretty these are more common to find parts like if i if i had a deer in impact with this I would be easily be able to go to the junkyard and find a good headlight that match the car because they don't have a different color bezel. Um, probably a white fender, a white door. I mean, it'd be so easy. So that's another reason why I'm trying to keep this. Let me get the hood.
so the hood strut still works great on it which is really cool again first year for the vvt i 16 valve 2.4 liter four cylinder which was i guess was used until 2007 don't get me or correct me if i'm wrong again timing chain driven probably not gonna have any issues with it i think these do have a little bit of an issue with oil seeping past the oil seals and so you'll see a little bit of blue smoke on startup and maybe a little bit of rattling. Um, I think most of them have it pretty common. You'll hear the wheel kind of squeak a little bit when you turn it. Again, these are minor nuisances that I'm talking about. This is a small change, all things considered, you know. So, again, similar setup as the Honda. Maybe just a smidgen more room to work. But you got your alternator right there and ac compressor down there in the bottom so everything's decently easy to get to i don't see where the power steering pump is if it's down there in the bottom i think it is so that may not be quite as easy to get to these are mounted in the opposite direction i suppose because you have your exhaust coming out the front as opposed to the back and your intake is in the back so if you have to do intake work it might be a little bit more difficult to get back there but again these 2.4s, you're really not going to have to do much to, most likely, because of it being a Toyota product and all that good stuff. Uh, I think the battery's pretty new. I did replace the starter when I originally, um, back in January, for them. And so the starter's brand new. I think it's on its third starter. Um, but again, you take the airbox off a couple of bolts and the thing is off it's not buried under something in order to where you have to get to it so that's a really easy job um guys this thing is not needed much the entire time that he's owned it uh what it does need now and again 217,000 miles let me get you off the tripod is motor mounts this one right here you can kind of see that it's pretty wore out you can kind of see it breaking down right there the rubber right so pretty typical wear item honestly for the mileage um can't really fault the car or anything like that for it um your second motor mounts literally right there so it's just a big old looks like a 17 millimeter maybe to take it off um, I'll do a video on that if y'all are interested in it when I do it. Um, but yeah, pretty simple. He hasn't had any issues with this car, aside from a starter, really. And uh, whatever the rattling is, which is probably from the motor mount stressing some of the pulleys and stuff on the engine, quite honestly. So... Um, it's really, really good, really good. You see a lot of these out on the road still, and it's crazy. Let me just close the hood. This car's even still got the original windshield on it, because it's still you still got the little Toyota quality inspected certification on. I do need to put some wiper blades on it because they probably haven't been replaced in a while, but. Again, you can get, with, the, with this being an O2, these things are all over the place for $3,000, at least in my area. I know in other areas it might be a little bit higher. Even with the inflated car prices, mostly because everybody's looking for crossovers now. So what happens is, you get a lot of people looking for crossovers, or newer vehicles and so a lot of these really good older vehicles like the Camrys um, even the Avalons the Accords and whatnot uh, really don't get a, in my opinion a lot of the notoriety that they should for being a good reliable car a lot of people nowadays it seems like if you have to put if you have to do anything to your car it's like it's a nuisance right it's like just crank it up go and if once it stops going then it's time to get a new one I suppose um, 
but every, actually everything that I have here at home right now has over 200,000 miles and after every time I make a video something happens to it like I, I made a 200,000 mile video with the pit here and it hit, I ended up hitting a deer the next week literally at 200,149 miles or something like that I mean it was crazy but knock on wood knock on whatever um, all the vehicles here with over 200,000 miles on them have been very I I trust them to pretty much go anywhere obviously you need to do a little bit of maintenance to them here and there to keep them up but again if you get like a Honda or if you get a Toyota most of them most of the fixes that you're going to encounter are probably going to be cheaper than most other vehicles and you'll most likely have to encounter them less as long as you keep them properly maintained probably with Honda and Toyota fluids they are they do like their own make and model fluids so remember that if you decide to get one anyways that's the Camry that's the fit well I'll get the camera back a little bit and we'll wrap this up so guys if you made it this far in the video I appreciate it um, I hope that whatever I have done here um, has made it helpful for y'all to kind of determine uh, if you're looking for just a cheap car, like I said, around $3,000, the fit's probably going to be in three to 5000 range. You can probably get a Camry a little bit cheaper of this year, um, just because they're older and sedans aren't quite as highly looked or sought after now here in the United States. Um... Hope I've helped y'all out in some decision-making processes. If y'all have any questions about either of these cars, feel free to comment on this video below. I, I do my best to answer as many comments as possible on my videos. Also, I have a website, ellismowers.com. You can email me at ellis at ellismowers.com. My email address and Facebook and all that is on my website there if you have any questions about this. Like I said, I wish I could keep both of these. It does not make financial sense for me to keep both of them, considering that between my wife and I, we have four vehicles to drive. Um, and so, unfortunately, one of them's got to go. And I was not looking for one to replace. But, like I said, a family member. Um, I have known this vehicle for a long, long time. And I know that it's been maintained well and kept up on most items just needs a little bit of love like i said motor mounts and it does need a transmission i'm not going to flush the transmission but i do want to kind of introduce a little bit of new transmission fluid into the car hopefully to prolong the life of that a little bit although um we're going to see how far this thing goes i'll give you all 10,000 mile updates or so on it um and i'll do that with all my vehicles here but um that leaves a fit to leave it's unfortunate because i love that car it's just a it's just with the commute that I have to work, it's not as comfortable as I want it to be, nor is it as fast as I want it to be. Um, but man, it'll haul some stuff, and it's been great for my mower business. So I've really enjoyed, or my mower hobby, I suppose. So I've really enjoyed that car in the three years that I've owned it. Now that I've got these cars, I don't think I'll be getting anything anytime soon. So I appreciate y'all watching. I hope y'all enjoyed it, and I'll catch y'all in the next video. See you then.